I think on my part, uh, as I indicated in my own statement, that uh, the discussions that we have had, the Prime Minister has assured us that uh, Kenya will continue to have access to um, the UK market on a preferential basis that already exists. And of course, we are also seeking to see how we can even improve trade between our two countries. Britain is and has been our largest trading partner for a long time, as well as one of the largest investors in Kenya. And of course, we look forward to deepening that and strengthening that and broadening it as we, as we move forward. And uh, as we have said it, and uh, the assurances that we have also been given, I don't believe Brexit is going to dent um, our ability to further strengthen and deepen both trade and investment between our two countries. And again, as I said in my statement, working together under the umbrella of the Commonwealth to see how we can even utilize that organization that pulls together people of shared values, shared systems, to see again how we could take advantage of that to improve trade, fair trade, across the Commonwealth countries. So um, I don't see Brexit meaning anything detrimental towards the strong trade ties that we already have. And I've said that we are seeking to actually boost that going forward. Uh, the second question is Dan Martin. Do I see Dan? Yes, Dan. I think there's a microphone behind you. Hi, uh, Prime Minister. Um, President Macron says that the EU should offer Britain uh, satellite status. Is that the same as a uh, vassal state, yes or no? And do you agree with Nick Timothy that Chequers is the worst of all worlds and that Britain should push for a deal more in keeping with what the public voted for? Uh, and President, the British pr Prime Minister hasn't visited Kenya for 30 years. Are you disappointed by that? Do you think uh, we've neglected you? And do you see Brexit as an opportunity for African countries? Uh, again, if I go first, in relation to delivering on the public vote, the public voted, the British public voted to leave the European Union. We will be leaving the European Union on the 29th of March 2019. They voted to bring an end to free movement, and that's non-negotiable. Free movement will end. They don't want to be sending vast sums of money every year to the European Union, and we won't be sending vast sums of money every year to the European Union. They want to be out of the common agricultural policy. We'll be out of the common agricultural policy. They want to be out of the common fisheries policy. We'll be out of the common fisheries policy, and we'll be out of the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice. So we will be delivering on the vote of the British people. The Chequers deal that we've put forward, I believe, is a good deal for the UK but also a good deal for the European Union. It ensures that we can maintain uh, a good trading relationship with the EU while having the freedom to negotiate trade deals on our own behalf around the rest of the world. Uh, it ensures we, and doing that means we can protect jobs and livelihoods, but the Chequers deal will also deliver on ensuring that we have no hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland while maintaining the integrity of the United Kingdom. So Chequers delivers on the Brexit vote, it does it in a way that I believe is good for the UK. Obviously, we're in negotiations with the European Union, but I believe our proposals are not just good for the UK, but they're good for the EU as well. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, it's been 30 years plus. Uh, I don't want to dwell on the past. I'm looking to the future, and uh, we welcome the Prime Minister today, and I'm sure, and as we've discussed, this is the first, hopefully, of many more visits in the future. And uh, we are looking forward, like I said, to strengthening the ties that we've already had. Despite the fact that there hasn't been a British Prime Minister, there has always been constant high-level engagement between our two countries, between our two governments. And uh, all we are seeing is this now being reinforced. And I won't say it's just because of Brexit, because we're not only just talking about trade, we're talking about security, we're talking about partnership, various uh, issues at the multilateral level at the UN, support for our uh, United Nations headquarters that is here in Nairobi, support in various other areas 